Hey gang, Scott here, taking a deep dive into the lens blur filter in On One Effects. Uh, this filter, it adds a shallow depth of field look. It simulates a, uh, you know, a lens where you can create bokeh, you know, your, your f1.8, your f2.2 type of lenses, and different aperture blades and all these kinds of things where you can change the shape of the bokeh. So this filter's got some controls that let us make things like this. And so I want to run down those with you here, and, and we'll go through all the different controls. I'll show you a few examples. And real quick, if you're thinking about adding on one, the photo raw effects, any of the plugins to your workflow, check the show notes. There is an offer code down there. It'll save you a little bit of money. Gives me a little bit of support won't cost you anything extra. So let's have a look at lens blur. I am in photo raw in the effects module and let me add the lens blur filter to this photo. You can see the photo is now blurry, right? So, uh, but let's run down our controls before we start talking about you know, different ways we would use it. So uh, with all filters, we have our masking, we have an overall opacity, we've got some styles and many of these styles like these ones here, the bokeh ones affect the photo globally. Other ones, you'll notice that it adds a mask for you automatically. And this can be handy depending on the type of look that you're working with. But you should already get the idea, right? Even with these bokeh and the bokeh shapes and so forth, I would not typically add this much blur to a photo without masking some of it away, right? You're trying to simulate that soft depth of field, you know, a shallow depth of field that you would get with a very wide aperture. So portions of your photo are very crisp and other portions that are, you know, farther away from your lens, the distance between your subject and background, those are the things that get soft. So some of them will add a mask for you automatically, but you will be using masking tools with the lens blur filter. Okay, what about the other controls here? We have the amount of the blur, right? So we have, like you can see where I've, I'm creating that very soft, like you know, bokeh style thing there. This is a little different than the amount slider for the overall filter. If I crank this up and then start pulling this back, this gets kind of weird and fuzzy and, and muddy. And you know, it, I suppose there may be a use for something like this with perhaps a texture or something kind of interesting, like simulated clouds or something. But usually, I'm keeping the opacity at full strength, and I'm working the amount slider to change the you know that that amount of that bokeh there. Okay, optic quality. This is really the smoothness as that little hover thing suggested. Of the uh, of the blurred area, like here, all the way down at zero, these like almost like these hollow little uh, little bokeh balls, and then as I push in and raise that up, these get smoothed out. Got a couple of controls for aperture, and these are you know simulating what you'd have inside a lens, like in the lens, there's the different aperture blades as you close and raise them, and depending on the number of blades and how they're curved, that controls how the bokeh gets shaped with a physical lens. We've got two sliders to simulate that with our filter. You know, sides is how many aperture blades, right? And that will affect, let me push the amount up really far so we can see, you know, like looking in this area right here, we can see the shape of that bokeh, right? And as I change the sides, you can see that shape change some. Curvature affects how smooth or how uh, angular it is based on the sides. So like, you know, now if I get down into here, I've got little triangles. Now I've got, you know, diamonds and so forth. So depending on, you know, here I've got four sides. If I push that curvature, you know, then it becomes kind of like these interesting squares and you can get the idea. Now I've got pentagons and I've got hexagons. So you've got some interesting controls here to create the kind of look that you might want to have for your photo. The remaining sliders, blooming, brightness, contrast, noise, uh, these I classify as convenience sliders. They're here because uh, sometimes you want to brighten or darken things. Maybe you want to boost contrast. So you have those controls here. Blooming will do the brightness, right? So we can we can make the photo darker or brighter. You know, defaults is right there. Um, 
brightness. I'm sorry. Did I say I said blooming of the photo? I'm sorry. Blooming is the is the brightness of the bokeh, not not the photo. The bokeh. So notice the bokeh is getting brighter, getting darker. Brightness is the overall photo. So this is kind of like your exposure slider. Contrast is contrast. We we, we kind of know what contrast does. And then noise is noise. We can add a bit of uh, of grain or you know uh, noise to the blurred area. All right. So let's reset all of this. And for a photo like this, um, I kind of liked that uh, that lower number of sides, you know, bigger amount of bokeh. But let me start with one of the styles. So large, medium is pretty good. I'll choose medium. And as we said, we want to mask, right? So let's uh, let's put our photo in the center here. I'll click the masking area. A common mask to use with lens blur, because a lot of times you're doing this for a particular subject, you want to accent a subject is in the masking bug, you're going to choose the center shape. And what center says is mask things away from the center of this oval you put on the photo. And then we can shape the oval. And for a portrait, you'd take the center and pretty much put it right on the person's eye, right? This is where you'd focus your camera if you were doing this you know, uh, with, a, with a physical lens. And maybe we'll rotate that like this. And then try to feather it out. Now, as I start to do this, You'll start to get the idea of what's going on. And you'll also get the idea where this needs more work, right? Often if you're trying to do something where you're simulating that depth of field, uh, the tools here, they don't have like a depth map. It's not like the there's um, some sort of engine that's figuring out, oh, these tree branches here, they're behind my subject. And so these also should be getting a similar amount of blur you need to go and kind of tidy that up yourself. Similarly, like with her sweater here and the hair in the front, this is getting too much of the, the lens blur. So we've got to grab a masking brush. Let's see, we've got paint out. Um, maybe uh, the feather is pretty good. Starting with a very low opacity, maybe 15. I'll make that brush a little bit smaller so I don't over, over paint. And you know, then I say, oh, I want to start taking away some of that blur and slowly bringing it back in. So there is, you know, some, let's increase that opacity so you can get an idea of what's really happening here, right? So I'm, I'm returning some of that crispness to you know, my main subject here, who's in the, in the foreground, roughly on the same focal plane as the center point, the eye. I'm not painting, I'm just pointing right now. And so I'd want to clean this up to some degree. And this will be a test of your masking skills in, in this particular arena. The opposite here, right? I would need to paint in, and I'd want to kind of reintroduce some of that blur. Now, this is entirely too strong, right? That's only half strength. So these low opacities for this cleanup work are going to be better, right? And even, even that starts to feel a little bit strong unless I mean, you know, get the blend going out here. But as, as I'm saying earlier, you know, this is where you're simulating things and you, the photographer, still need to understand the relationship between your subjects, the background, the depth, what would normally be going on, and how would you control for it. Now, there's other types of photos where it's simpler and you can just throw this, uh, this center gradient on the photo with the lens blur, and it works out pretty well. Let me show you one of those. In this example, you can see that I've added some blur. I've got the lens blur here, and that blur is added to the outside, and I'm protecting the center part. This is you know, my, my main subject here. You know, these wonderful chocolate truffles in Belgium. Uh, oh, they're fantastic. This type of scene, the masking was very, very simple. If I'll open this up, we'll have a view on it. It's a straight ellipse, right? There's nothing nothing special, nothing fancy about it. As I choose that, you can see here's the shape, and it is just a matter of deciding where to position it. Uh, a little bit of rotation I chose to do, and then feathering it out. And it's in the realm of you know believability, where my eye is, uh, let me turn off that uh, masking area, my eye is being drawn right in here, and uh, even if this is maybe slightly heavy, or you know, if I were using a lens with that uh, that 
proper, you know, optic version of depth of field, you know, maybe this row right here of chocolates might be a little bit softer. But if I don't have that kind of lens with me, or, you know, this photo I took 10 plus years ago, I knew less about aperture and soft, uh, you know, focus and shallow depth of field than I do now. It's within the realm of believability. Uh, you can still use those masking tools to really clean things up. But for, for subjects that are, are tighter and, uh, you know, closer in, uh, in proximity here, using one of these just simple graduated filters, um, like the center shaped one work really really well with the lens blur one more look that we can do with the lens blur filter this is kind of a classic one it's adding a tilt shift style and it creates a miniature kind of look when you are elevated from say a cityscape or a long landscape you know a broad view of things yeah maybe it's a little gimmicky but you know honestly i'm not above a gimmick from time to time uh, but it is a classic one so i want to make sure i show it to you here so i've done a few changes to this photo let me add the lens blur and I'll choose the tilt shift style and you'll notice right away that I have blurring on the top blurring on the bottom and not so much in the middle that's the tilt shift right the tilt shift is adding a mask right so this is one of those styles that adds a mask for us automatically and let me choose the masking bug it's a reflected gradient and so that's nice because we have independent control over the feather and the position of both sides of the gradient. And you can see if I move off here that the center part of the photo is crisp and as it fades out it adds this kind of miniaturization feel to it right before and after. And for this photo I think it might be a little more dynamic if I kind of position this to more follow the river. You know maybe do something like this fade it out here um, tighten this in because the um, what's really nice with the like a cityscape like this these night lights right you can see those pick up the bokeh very nicely and we still have all of the different sliders there like if you want more bokeh or, or less you still have those controls and you can change the shape of those bokeh with the curvature and the sides you know this one's here okay maybe something like that to add you know um, little spotlights I kinda like the curvature really high and the sides really big just for nice round soft blurring things it's almost like quite cinematic when um when I've got that kind of, of a bokeh feel but here it's like kinda angle this out have it fade off there I'm making sure to cover these guys here with that and feather it out we have our overall um, uh, amount we touched. And then for this, it, we still have our masking tools. So like if it felt like in the foreground here, maybe right here through this area, it's getting too much blurring. Um, I can't pivot or angle the reflected gradient, but I have my masking tools, right? So I view this, I can grab my brush, I can paint out and maybe, um, We'll start with something a little aggressive just so that you can see it in the video. 25% and I want to remove some of that effect from in here off. Another pass through here, another pass through here. Just adding a little bit of that crispness back in to this part of the photo. Uh, it's you know there's, these are the tweaks these are little subtle changes that you can do but the the tilt shift adds that miniature feel to uh, it looks really nice on cityscapes you can do it on landscapes as well as long as there's a good uh, good subject to work with so that overall that is the sum total of the uh, the lens blur filter and uh, explore it and play with it uh, it's fun to you know tilt around with uh, tilt around to toy around with uh, with tilt shift or with the the, the, the bokeh shapes uh, and it you know it can accent certain photos in in a very nice way uh, I'll throw out one other idea for you when you play around with it and you're just really blurring things out you can create your own backgrounds your own textures that have a very interesting unique bokeh style to them so you can think about the lens blur filter 
not necessarily as solely for the photo you're working on, but for creating other textures or blends, you know, light leaks or things like that that you might add in to other photos in a layered workflow. Hope you found the video interesting. Got questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.